I'm just going to start writing a method. We're going to observe what happens. And this will give us something to build on on Monday. So let's do another method, public static void string example. And let's do a little scanner stuff like we learned in the last unit. Local variable s of type scanner equals new scanner. We're going to read from the terminal system.in. We're going to prompt the user. To enter two words. We're going to read in each of two words and store them in local variables by invoking the next method on the scanner object. And then we're simply going to print out a message if the strings are equal or not. If str1 is equal to str2, strings are equal. Else, strings are not equal. So take a moment, type compile, run this by right clicking on the conditions class in the BlueJ project window and choosing the string example method. Type in two words that are not equal. See what this printed. Type in two words that are equal. Test, you know, test both options. Run it a couple times and we will see what we get. All right, I'm going to try this too. Right click on conditions, run the string example, enter two words, vampire, goblin. Strings are not equal. Excellent. All right, enter two more words, goblin, goblin. Strings are still not equal. This is probably surprising, but here's the important information that's going to help you see this from a different perspective. The equality operator, the two equal signs, checks if the value of the thing on the left and the value of the thing on the right are the same, are equal. That's what the equality operator does. What, what is the value of str1? It's a reference, right? str1 is a has a class type. It's a string. The value of str1 is some reference. The value of str2 is some reference. The question we're asking is the reference stored in str1 equal to the reference stored in str2. The question we're asking are do these two variables refer to the same object? And the answer to that question is no, they don't. Because the next method of scanner, it creates a new string and returns a reference to that new string. And when we call the next method a second time, it creates yet another new string object and returns a different reference to that different object. So the equality operator with class types says, are these two variables referring to the same object? There's times that's useful, but that's not what we want here. So on Monday, we will see, well, how can we ask a different question to say, do these two variables have the same sequence of characters? Okay. That's what we'll do on Monday. So commit and push. We only got a little bit of time left. All right. So let's add a comment to explain the insight, to capture the insight we gained previously. 
about the equality operator. So the equality operator, and that's the double equal sign thing, returns true if the two variables, in this case we're talking about string one and string two, contain the same value. That's always true. Do these two variables contain the same value? For primitives, that behaves totally like we expect. Are these two integer variables both seven? You know, are they equal to each other? Um, however, sometimes we forget that for variables of a class type, including strings, strings are classes, this means that they contain the same reference. That is, just to be clear, they refer to the same object in memory, not that the two strings have the same sequence of characters. And so this might be surprising. To be clear, sometimes we really do want to ask the question, hey, do these two variables refer to the same object? Or do these two variables not refer to the same object? In which case the equality operator or the inequality operator is totally appropriate. It's just not appropriate if the question we're really trying to ask is do these two strings have the same sequence of characters? Using the equality operator, when we should use the, when, when we shouldn't, I guess, is probably the biggest pitfall that we run into in this unit. Um, so if your code isn't behaving as expected, if your conditions aren't evaluating the way you expect, double check the question you're asking. Like, am I asking if the references are equal or do I really want to compare the sequence of characters? If we truly want, oh, so let's update what we're printing here. This doesn't print so much that the strings are equal. It prints that the string references are equal or the string references are not equal. So that's a little bit more accurate now. All right, so what if though we really do want to ask the question, do these two string objects contain the same sequence of characters? Um, we can do that. There is a method on the string class and it's on our quick reference. Um, and the method is called equals, which is a pretty good name. So the equals method returns true if the two objects referenced, reference, referenced, referenced by the variables are equal. I put equal in quotes because what equals means means is defined by the class. For strings, it means that the two objects have the same sequence of characters. So the equals method is on our quick reference for the string class. The equals method um, is also defined for many other classes. It's not unique just to strings, but each class decides what equals means for that class. Um, so for example, two rectangles might be equal if they have the same x and y and the same width and height. We might call the rectangles equal. Not every class has a special definition for what equals means. I don't think the turtle class does. Um, so I'm not sure what it means for two turtles to be equal. Right? Um, in this class, we're really pretty much just going to focus on whether two strings are equal or not. Um, in software engineering, we, we actually implement our own equals method for our own classes, but that's uh, a bit beyond the scope of of this class. Um, 
So what's that look like in context? Let's write a snippet of code that does this. If str1 dot equals parentheses str2. The equals method is just like any other method we call on a string, like to uppercase or substring or index of. Save a little bit of typing. I'm going to copy the prints. We'll change them to say strings are equal or strings are not equal. In this case, we said str1 dot equals and then in parentheses str2. It's the same as if we had said str2 dot equals and in parentheses str1. It doesn't matter which of the two string variables we call the equals method. So this is a big improvement. If we run our code again, and I run the string example, and I type in turkey, and I type in turkey again, I get the string references are not equal. That's true, two separate string objects, but the strings are equal, which is also true. Um, they have the same sequence of characters, so that's good. So again, just, just watch out for this. Um, when you're writing an if statement, pause and ask yourself, am I interested in if these two strings have the same sequence of characters, or am I interested if these two variables reference the same string? Because in Java, those are two very different questions, and you just want to make sure they're both useful questions. You just want to make sure you ask the right one. We can do more than just determine if two different strings are equal. We can also compare strings. We can determine which string comes before which other string. This is useful when sorting stuff. We'll do a lot of that next semester. Um, this is useful in many other cases as well. And this is how we determine what is less than or greater than when it comes to strings. It's based on characters. It's pretty much the order of words show up in the dictionary. Okay, That can save you a lot of trouble. It's basically alphabetical order with one small twist. Okay? The letter A is less than. It comes before the letter B. That's like alphabetical order. That's what we would expect. Capital letter A is less than, it comes before capital letter B. That's alphabetical order. That's what we would expect. If there are digits, the digit zero comes before, it's less than the digit one. I think that's what we would expect. It's really just this fourth bullet that can trip us up. And this is why we don't say it's alphabetical order. We say it's lexicographic order. That's the term we use. And the reason for that is the capital letter B is less than the lowercase letter a. In fact, all capital letters come before all lowercase letters. And if your reaction is, that seems silly, what is that? Who came up with this system? Um, that's a very natural reaction, and I, I kind of agree with you. Um, the reason is each of these characters are actually stored in the computer with a number based on their ASCII value. Um, and so the capital letters all are consecutive, which makes sense, but they all have lower values than the corresponding lowercase letters. So that's why when we sort, um, you'll see this when you like list the contents of a directory in Linux, um, capital letters come before lowercase letters. So just basically do everything in alphabetical order, but just watch out for capitals, because um, that's the one All right, so let's, let's try this out. So how do we determine which of two strings comes first? So let's say we're, we want to basically take these two strings that we've typed in, and we want to print out which string comes first. That is, which string is lexicographically less than another. So let's write a comment block that explains how we do this. We, um, we will determine 
which string comes first lexographically, I think I spelled that right, using the compare to method of the string class. The compare to method is also on your AP quick reference sheet. I get confused by how the compare to method behaves a lot. So it's really helpful to look at the quick reference sheet and read the explanation so I understand what the return value means. And I'll give you a, a specific tip related to that in just a moment. But use your quick reference sheets, super useful. All right, how does the compare to method work? Compare to returns an int value. Three options. It will return zero if the strings are equal. And again, by equal, we mean same sequence of characters. So instead of using the equals method, you can use the compare to method and check if the compare to method returns a value of zero. Totally legit. If the compare to method returns a value less than zero, that is a negative integer, it will return a negative integer if string one is less than string two lexographically. It doesn't mean it returns a value of negative one. It could return a value of negative four million. It just returns some negative integer if string one is less than string two, if string one comes before string two. And it returns a positive integer if string one is greater than string two. And here's the actual line of code that does this. We'll declare a local variable type int called result. And we say str1.compare2 str2. This, this comment goes with this line of code. If we swap string one and string two, it's asking a totally different question, right? It's not like the equals method where it doesn't matter if we call equals on string one or string two. It very much matters which string we're calling this on. So we're asking is string one compared to string two, if it's less than zero, a negative integer, String one is less than string two. And really, here's, here's what I do, because I get confused by this. When I'm trying to reason through this, I look at the line of code I've written, like this line right here, str1.compare2, str2. And, if, and I say to myself, OK, if the result is less than 0, I replace the word, just, I just do this in my head, but I replace the word compare to with a less than symbol. Oh, string one is less than string two. If the result is greater than zero, in my head I replace the word compare to with a greater than symbol. Oh, str1 is greater than, it comes after string two. And that little substitution helps me from getting it backwards. It's, I just personally, I find it really easy to do it the wrong way. So maybe that will help you as well. All right, so let's, um, let's actually act on this result to determine which string is the first string. So if result is less than zero, we'll create a variable first string here and we'll set it to string one. Else if result is, oh, so if result is less than zero, that means string one is less than string two, so string one comes first. We'll store it, we'll copy that reference into this variable for string. Else if result is greater than zero, that means string one is greater than string two. So first string equals string two. And then we'll print this out.
the first string is first str. Cool. So we'll print which string comes lexicographically first. We have a compiler error. I wrote this code in a fashion that I see lots of people write with statements. Okay. What it's saying here is it says first str is an undeclared variable. And the reason for that is we're like, wait a minute, I declared it right here and here. But remember, now that we're dealing with like blocks of code, blocks denoted by curly block brackets, the scope, the lifetime of a variable is limited to the curly brackets it's in, the block of code it's in. This variable first string doesn't exist outside of these curly brackets. This variable first string doesn't exist outside of these curly brackets. It's really been that way all along. It's just that previously our curly brackets have been for the whole method with our local variables, not like an if block or an else if block. So if I want to use the variable first string here, I can't declare it inside of these curly brackets. I need to declare it up here. And then I don't need to redeclare it in these blocks. So watch out for that. That's something I, that's a pitfall um, a lot of students run into when they start doing if else statements. Ooh, we still have a compiler error. The variable first string might not have been initialized. Well, I initialize it here if the result is less than zero, and I initialize it here if the result is greater than zero, but if the result is actually zero, it never gets initialized. So I'm gonna initialize it up here to a value of null meaning the variable first str doesn't reference the string yet. Okay. So this is helpful now that it compiles, but that la fixing that last issue reminded me that I need a little bit more sophisticated code down here because there may not be a first string. If the two strings are equal, neither string is first, so I want to print a message related to that. So I basically need to check, hey, did I assign a value to first string? And if so, then I'll print this out. Otherwise, I'll just say the strings are equal. So I can say if first str is not equal to null. This is cool. We're using the inequality operator to actually check the value of the reference. I'm saying, hey, is the value of first str, which would be a reference, if that value isn't null, that means it refers to some string object somewhere, meaning I initialized it to either str1 or str2, so it's okay to print it out. Um, if I didn't check if it was not equal to null, and I, this line of code ran, I would get a null pointer exception. Because it's gonna try to concatenate a string, but there's no string there. The value of the variable is null, and my program would crash. So this is much better. I probably should have ran it that way so you could see it, but that's okay. If it is null, the strings are equal. So let's print that out. Type this, compile this, run it several times, try different strings, try all lowercase strings, try some uppercase strings with lowercase strings, um, run through different cases just so that you get comfortable with the fact of 
whether it's uh, behaving as you as you expect. So for example, I could try we'll try easy stuff first, like apple and banana. Cool, apple comes before banana. Not too surprising. I could try like addendum and add. Add comes before addendum. If all the letters are the same and the word is shorter, shorter wind comes shorter word comes first in the dictionary. Add comes before addendum. That works out okay. The surprising example is like apple versus banana with a capital B. Banana comes first. That's a little weird. But that's that lexicographic order. 